Hey, what's up, A-Push Kids? We're back for our next lecture in AP U.S. History. Today, we're going to be covering topic 8.13, the environment and natural resources from 1968 to 1980. Our learning objective today is 8.0, explain how and why policies related to the environment developed and changed from 1968 to 1980. Got a few key ideas for us today. Our first one says ideological, military, and economic concerns shaped U.S. involvement in the Middle East, with several oil crises in the region eventually sparking attempts at creating a national energy policy. Now, the United States and our involvement in the Middle East goes all the way back to the Eisenhower Doctrine which essentially said that the United States was going to protect the Middle East from the uh, from communist expansion. We also attempted to uh, uh, solve our Middle Eastern oil problems and uh, maintain that flow of oil through things such as uh, the trying to um, solve the Suez oil, uh, Suez Canal crisis earlier on in the 1950s as well. But the United States, because of automania um, of the 1950s, uh, the use of U.S. oil was on the rise. We used more and more oil than we ever had before. And in the 1960s, the oil-rich nations of the Middle East and Latin America had formed the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, otherwise known as OPEC. Now, this attempted to control the eventual supply of oil and be able to um, control and raise essentially the price of oil uh, for the United States. Now, our oil situation became though even worse though in the 1970s. Um, and we had two oil crises in the 1970s. The first one happened in 1973. Um, in retaliation for our support of Israel, OPEC would cut off oil supplies to the United States in 1973. And as a result, gas prices are going to soar and shortages led to long lines for gasoline in the United States. And we can see here's the average price per gallon of a gallon of regular oil uh, gasoline in the United States. Now we can see that in 1973 at the beginning of the oil crisis, gas was about 40 cents a gallon and it rose all the way up to $1.20 a gallon uh, by 1980. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wow, 40 cents and $1.20, that's not bad. I paid $2.40 the other day or $2.60 or whatever the, the price is at the pump right now. But if you adjust for inflation, 40 cents right now today in uh, 2019 is $2.31 a gallon. So that's pretty comparable to what we have. Dollar twenty, that's almost seven dollars a gallon in 2019. So that's a whole lot of money for a gallon of gasoline. Plus, there was huge, huge lines like we see. I mean, it would take hours to get gas. Now, as a result of this, as a result of this in the mid 1970s, uh, when Jimmy Carter becomes the president, he's going to try and attack the energy crisis, the re uh, resulting recession and stagflation that happens. And so we're going to start to basically create our own kind of uh, energy policy, and we try to. And what we start to do is we start to we want to become you know us independent really of those Middle Eastern nations. We start offshore drilling, oil drilling more. Uh, we start to rely on more other sources of energy, um, renewable sources such as nuclear energy, wind energy, etc. Though um, most of these early attempts will fail uh, and have only really started to see uh, major gains in recent years. Leading us then to key idea number two. Environmental problems and accidents led to the growing environmental movement that aimed to use legislative and public efforts to combat pollution and protect natural resources. The federal government established new environmental programs and regulations. So the, really what we see in the beginning of the 70s is we see the beginning of the environmental movement. And so we see this kind of beginning of the environmental philosophy. And it really begins with Rachel Carson and her book, Silent Spring, which warned about the use of pesticides. In addition to this, Paul Ehrlich's population bomb warned the dangers of a growing population. Now, not only did these books help to kind of awaken Americans to the growing environmental problems around us, but a series of environmental disasters beginning in the late 1960s and through the 1970s are also going to open up America's eyes to what's kind of going on with our environment. The first one happened on January 28, 1969, 
when an oil well blowout at the Union Oil's offshore platform in the Santa Barbara Channel, all six miles off the California coast, began one of the worst oil spills in U.S. history. The worst of the spill would continue for 11 days, with lesser leaks continuing for months thereafter. Seabirds, seals, dolphins, kelp beds, and miles of beaches were coated with black crude. In the end, an estimated 80 to 100,000 barrels of oil were spilled, and some 30 to 35 miles of California's coastline was tarred. In the immediate aftermath of the spill, the Nixon administration and Interior Secretary Hickel did take some steps to address the shortcomings in the offshore oil policies. For instance, on February 6th, the administration pledged to develop stringent new regulations for offshore oil drilling and, and also announced a moratorium on new federal oil leases in California's Santa Barbara Channel. Now, just months later, in June of 1969, the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland, Ohio, caught fire. Yeah, that's right. The water was on fire. Now, the river was long polluted with oily wastes, chemicals, and debris. And the river fire, coming at a time of emerging national concern of pollution, made big news and became something of a famous disaster. I mean, the water was burning. The incident helped give momentum to a newly emerging national environmental movement. In addition to this, Love Canal is now Love Canal was an aborted canal project branching off the Niagara River about four miles south of Niagara Falls. Now, it's also became the neighborhood for about 800 single-family homes built right next to the canal. Now, between 1942 and 1953, the Hooker Chemical Company, with government sanction, began using the partially dug canal as a chemical waste dump. At the end of the period, the contents of the canal consisted of about 21,000 tons of toxic chemicals with at least 12 known carcinogens uh, among them. Now, the Hooker Chemical Company capped the 16-acre hazardous waste landfill with clay and sold the land to the school board. They built a school on top of it. Now, what ended up happening was hundreds of families became sick, and eventually 239 families had to be moved. Dozens of people died, and nearly $17 million had to be given out for what happened at the canal. In addition to this, we also had nuclear accidents, or near-nuclear accidents as well. At Three Mile Island, which is in Pennsylvania, the Three Mile Island accident was the partial meltdown of reactor number two at the generating station in Dauphin County, Pennsylvania, near Harrisburg. The subsequent radiation leak that occurred on March 28, 1979 was the most significant nuclear accident in U.S. history. Now, as a result of all of these things, a grassroots movement is going to explode in the United States and lead it to uh, environmental laws that are passed under administrations um, throughout the 1970s. For instance, Nixon is going to give an environmental message to Congress and support political regulation of the environment. It also leads to the first Earth Day on April 22, 1970 to help raise awareness um, for environmental issues. And we start to get really a decade of legislation to help protect the environment. For instance, in 1964, we're going to pass the Wilderness Act. In 1968, the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act is passed. The National Environmental Policy Act in 1969. And probably most significantly was in 1972, the Clean Air Act. So then the Clean Water Act was were all passed um, earlier on in the decade under the presidency of Nixon. Other legislation continued in the 1970s, including the Pesticide Control Act of 1972, uh, more significantly the Endangered Species Act of 1973, um, then the Resource uh, Conservation Act of 76, and the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act of 1977. In addition, the Superfund of 1980, a direct response to what had happened at Love Canal, uh, provided money uh, to be able to clean up massive environmental disasters 
um, and spills that we had um, throughout the United States. Additionally, the federal government also passed, besides regulation, created new, um, uh, new organizations to help protect the environment. Uh, the creation of the EPA under Nixon again uh, was going to help regulate the environment and protect the environment. Now, I know we just listed a bunch of legislation. Uh, make sure that you guys know the Clean Water, uh, Clean Air Act, uh, the creation of the Endangered Species Act, the Superfund, and the creation of the EPA. All right. Well, that ends our, uh, our lecture for today. A couple major points, once again, to touch on. Understand that our uh, during the 1970s, we become increasingly uh, more concerned about our reliance on oil. and We do try and develop a national energy policy, though we kind of fail um, by, by 1980. We haven't done it yet. Uh, in addition to this, we've got a bunch of major environmental disasters, and this leads to environmental regulations throughout the 1970s that have a varying amount of success. Well, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And until next time, and as always, go Pack!